All right, we're doing an update video on the table. It's been a, a long time since you guys have seen this. I'm not sure how many of you guys remember this. Anyways, this is a giant, uh, it's like eight foot by 12 foot CNC plasma table that I've been building for several years. Started this a long time ago when I needed to make more money and I made more money and I didn't really need it. Anyways, it's back. We're getting this thing squared away and going again so we can start utilizing it for blackout and making some money with it. So some of the stuff that we've been working on with this thing is raising the slat height or the water depth on this. I wanted to raise it a little bit more. So once it, if you have it too low and you're doing a lot of cutting and it gets a lot of slag in there, it'll fill up quickly. So I wanted to raise that so it doesn't fill up as quick. Also, when I raise this, I end up making this upper part the slat holders. So it's kind of like a tray that sits in there that holds the slats. So for what I did on that part of it, we have angle iron along here and then I had 260 holes in this thing that I drilled and tapped and then I cut 260 pieces of all thread and those are the uprights that hold the slats uh, so they don't fall over. So I have the holes drilled and tapped on angle iron that is in the sides and then I have one inch uh, by one inch angle iron, two pieces here in the middle and those have the uprights as well. And then I have feet, adjustable feet that go down and rest on the bed to add any support that I might have. And if you come from over here at this angle, you can see the slats have an S shape to them. The purpose of that is so I don't have to have two posts holding the slats up. I can just have one and then the bend of the slats uh, add strength to it. So it gives it a little bit more structure for holding material up. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of work. I'm pretty much done with wanting to drill and tap holes, but the uh, I will say those new Icon Tap and Dies came in super handy because I used the one tap to do all this and it's still perfectly good. Just make sure you use cutting fluid and that thing will last you forever. But we got the slats done and the upper tray is all sealed in and then a ton of painting. This thing was a freaking nightmare to paint. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> if you have something this big to paint, don't spray paint it. I would. I was really wanting to have it powder coated, but we didn't really have the funds for that, so went the spray paint route. But I should have just got some automotive paint. It would have been a lot quicker, turned out nicer. Thank God I wore a mask, because I'd probably be dead with how much paint was, because I had to paint it, you know, up above. So it was just like raining paint on me. And anyways, so the way this, we have this set up in this position, we're gonna end up having the computer station over here, and then you'll zero your cuts on this end, since it's right by the computer station. The computer is going to be set up with an Xbox controller, so the controller itself uh, will be utilized to jog the machine around, start and stop cuts, etc. And then down here is where we have our uh, beams for the control box, so that will mount right here and you'll be able to uh, turn the machine on and off right here by the computer. And then. When I originally bought the stuff for this and got the, the plasma cutter, I figured I would have a long enough lead for this. That's what I thought. But <laughs> the lead is barely long enough, so the only location the plasma cutter can go is right here. So we're gonna put it in this area, uh, and then that'll be plenty of length for it to do its thing. Another thing I added on this that I didn't have before is these beams. I added those all throughout underneath here because I plan on uh, putting sheets of material under here. So we'll put sheets to make it basically an enclosed tabletop. And then if we have any extra material, we'll probably store that at the other end for at the moment until I can build a rack later on down the road. And then hopefully my goals for, I'd like to build a rack uh, and then have locating pins. So you'll wheel the rack up to the side of the table, drop your pins in, that'll hold the rack to this thing. And then you can slide the material on from the side that's why these slats are running this way, so the material will slide on here nice and smooth. And then that rack, I want to make all adjustable. That's a whole nother project in itself, so we'll have to tackle that later. But there is not, there's honestly not a lot left on this table uh, to do. So I need to get the gantry brought up here as well as my rails. These are where the rails sit that the, the gantry slides on. So we'll get that stuff up here, get it bolted, and then we're basically ready to start doing some test cuts. We will have to hook up a water tank because this is a water table. Um, so I want to be able to have the, the ability to raise and lower the water height. So we'll have a separate tank that holds the fluid. It'll hold a little bit more than what's in here. And then when we have to clean this out and get all the slag out of it, we will drain all the water back into that tank 
uh, so we can clean it because we use a cutting fluid on this and it's kind of expensive. So if you keep that cutting fluid clean, it'll last a long time. So that's what we're going to utilize the tank for is cleaning and raising and lowering the water, uh, water height. So I'm getting really excited for this. It's going to be, it's going to really, really help with some of the projects and hopefully, hopefully we can do some uh, side jobs and get some money flowing with this. Obviously, that's what I built it for is heavy production. <laughs> I don't personally need a table this big for my projects, so hopefully we can get it running or ripping on some uh, other projects for, for people and make some money. So I know that's a lot of rambling on and I didn't film anything as far as building this, but it's, it's a good update for the table. I'll probably film another one once we're doing some testing with this so I can show you guys kind of how it runs and uh, yeah, then we'll be done with it. Anyways, if you have any questions on this, make sure you drop a comment down below. Uh, this is my second table I've built, so I'm not new to building these things. Um, I have, I feel like I have a decent, decent amount of input if you are, are wanting to build one yourself versus buying it. Uh, so anyways, drop a comment down below on that. I think that's going to wrap up this video going over the table. I think I pretty much covered it, everything. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.